Well, we're on to page two of the Stamperia, Stamperia Home for the Holidays. So this is going to be a waterfall page. And it's going to have our waterfall in this orientation. So it's going to be in portrait style. So what you're going to do, you need to get six pieces of cardstock cut at four and a half wide by five and three quarters long. And you will be scoring all of those half an inch at the four and a half inch um, side. So get those. I already have mine all scored and I'm going to be using score tape and what you also need is a piece of paper that is five and three quarter inches wide doesn't really matter how long it is uh, make sure it's at least six inches long but five and three quarter inches wide we are going to be building our waterfall on this. So go ahead and get those all cut. Put your score tape on. I'm going to do that and then I will be right back. Okay, so got all my pieces. They're score tape. They're all burnished. So with, you're going to get the first one. And one thing about waterfalls, make sure this edge that you really press this down to get a sharp, sharp edge before you lay it down. So we have our piece and what we're going to do when we build it on here, this is going to act as a guide so we can keep our waterfall nice and straight. We are going to be placing this Top to bottom we center it and you want to make sure this edge and this edge are, are even straight with the paper. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and usually I do this with glue. I'm going to try and do it just by pulling the tape. See if I can even do that. Hopefully I do this right. So that's straight. So we have our first piece in. So this is straight with this paper here. So our next piece, I'm sure you've all built waterfalls before. You butt this one up to this one and you also make sure it is straight with this paper. Want to make sure it's straight. And I am going to do this off camera because I have to get real close. I can see it and I'm probably just going to pull it. But knowing me, and then I fold this down to make sure it's straight also this way. So these two are, are straight. I probably can do this on camera. Can I do this? I don't trust myself because if I screw up, but you know what I mean, right? So you have it lined up straight, straight. You check it this way. It's lined up straight, straight, and then you can pull your tape, but I'm going to do that. Should I do that off camera? I'll try and do it on camera. I just hate to make mistakes and have to do, use my undo. And I don't know where my pick tool is. I looked for it on the floor. I can't find it. I'm going to have to find some other tool to pull my tape. So that one's down. So now we have two. These are full straight. So you guys get the idea, right? 
So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of them off camera and then I'll be right back. And I want to show you something. So I'm putting this one in. This is number four. I got it lined up here. And then down here, it just, there's a little bit of overhang. If you can see, there's just a little bit of overhang. So you don't put that one in. What you do is you take it to your trimmer and you just cut that little sliver off. Let's see, so when I pull it over here, yeah, it just sticks out just a little bit. So I, I like doing it this way. It, it, you have so much more control over your waterfall. So I'm going to take this one um, to my trimmer and just cut off that little, little um, piece of overhang there and then hopefully I'll get them all on. So we have our waterfall all in place and make sure once you have these down you go through every single one of them and give them a really good crease. Waterfalls can get really bulky. So you want to make sure you have get enough more of the bulk down before you start adding some photos. So there's our waterfall. The other nice thing about doing this, laying it on this piece of paper, is if by chance you were off and you were crooked on one side, you still have a chance to take it to your trimmer and cut it to even it out. And now you can just transport this directly to your pocket page. So here's your pocket page. Make sure this is the sides, this is the top. The closed part's the top. So remember, this is going to be portrait, so it's going to go up and down in this direction. So we have an option with this last piece. More spittles. <laughs> oh my goodness. So do we want another, you can actually create another waterfall by just cutting this paper at a half an inch here, and then I would have seven waterfalls. I don't know if I wanna do this because I'm already tight for space. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and do that, but I can always cut it off. And that's the beauty of this too. If I don't want this extra flap, I can just go up to this last um, place where we added our last um, waterfall page and cut it right there. But I'm going to try, I'm going to cut it at a half an inch here and see what it looks like, how it fits on our page. So I decided to go ahead and cut um, cut that last piece off. So we were left with six, six waterfalls. And I just cut it right at the fold line <laughs> right here. And then we can just attach it straight to the paper. I decided to use this from the 8x8 collection. It's the reverse side of this. So I'm going to be using this. Got to trim that down and ink it. I'm going to put this here. Then this was the card I decided to use as the first one on this waterfall. And I have my little flap closure. I got I don't I'm not sure what how long to make it yet. This is um, but it's one and a half inches wide. Once I figure out how long to make it, I'll let you know. And I gotta get my margins here and here set first. But it's going to be something like this. And then, where is my... So these round, whoop, I'm always going over here and the camera's over here. <laughs> these round circle dies from the 8x8 collection. I like this little house. I was going to have it right here. So the little bunny is looking, going to be looking at 
the house there and then I will back it with another circle on this side so you won't and then you won't see you won't see this it'll be backed on the back side too and we'll have our magnet <clears throat> so that I still have to figure out once I get this down I'll get this settled and then I have this collection of die cuts this collection of die cuts so all these lovely little images that are they're not they're like they're chipboard that's basically what they are they're chipboard so I was kind of messing around with those they're fun to play with there's so many cute little images in, in this little pack and it's like oh my gosh which which little images can I use well I'm oh maybe I can put them up here oh that would be nice oh yeah perfect I just discovered that give us a 3d element right here oh perfect I didn't even know that oh my goodness what about this does this work oh I can't I can't do this one because I'm going to be having this here oh but that would have been nice too anyway I got all excited I got distracted so <laughs> so I'm gonna put that bunny there oh my god I'm so happy um, and then ooh, a little candy cane well so I was going to put this up in like this area with this is another one of those chipboard over here chipboard elements and what I did with this guy it's they're white they're not like cardboard so it's white I got a little marker this is a copper marker and I marked it because you know me I don't like any naked chipboard showing and then I just brushed it I don't know if you can see if it's this if it's even showing up there's some sparkle there because I brushed it with my Winka Stella I love my Winka Stella and I'm going to put that right in the middle these two little guys were from your cut aparts from the 8x8 there's a collection of these little stamps and I chose those those two but what I want to do is fill in some of the black with glitter so I have a um, the six pack of the Christmas um, I'll show you what they are stickles a six pack of Christmas stickles from Amazon and they're all Christmas colors and I put them down here so you can see them now this first one is you can see that green one that is my absolute favorite it's green and it's got some red in it it is gorgeous and then there's some blue some not quite um, silver it's more matte finish and then you got the red and then the regular silver and gold so I put them all down here I'm going which one would look good with but it has to go with this paper now this paper I chose is this I mean it does make everything pop out but I don't know if it necessarily goes with this green the green is just it's just a little different color of green I don't know it might clash but I was thinking the red the red would look good so I'm going to do some stickles with red and I'll come back and show you what what I came up with and then give you the measurements so where are we <laughs> so I got this page inked and cut but I have not adhered it completely I've got my score tape there I've only adhered it to this side and I have some repositional tape here that I'm going to put that down because what I want to do before I have it all down I want to be able to put my closure underneath here so it will hide my hinge but I don't know where I'm going to be putting this yet because I haven't added my waterfall so I marked where I want my waterfall it is 
basically a half an inch up from the bottom and I drew my line. I can't see my line. There's my line. And it is four, four eighths, five eighths, five eighths, six eighths, five eighths from the side. So half an inch up, five eighths in. And I just drew a line that I can't see right now, but it's there. I drew a pencil mark where I want it to be. And I put score tape on my waterfall, just this part of the waterfall that's going to be going down. Because I want that adhered real well. And then um, what I'm going to do is attach my waterfall. And I'm going to do it real slow because I got so much score tape. And you know me, I go real slow. <gasps> real slow. So I won't bore you with me putting it down. But um, once I come back, once I get it down, I will come back. We will get our bunny picture on here. And once we do that, then I'll be able to determine where we're going to put our flap. So that is what I'm going to do. So you guys can start working on getting your waterfall attached. Half an inch up, five eighths of an inch in from the corner here. And then I'll be back once I get mine attached. So the waterfall's in. Just make sure that you go through each of these and burnish them well. If you use glue or tape, you just make sure those are all put down so that is tight. Good. So waterfall is in. I'm going to recrease this edge too. So now this is the card we're using for the first flap. I'm going to put my white piece of paper under here so I can see a little bit better. The other thing I did is I rounded the corners here. I used my corner rounder, this one, and I used the medium. This is small and this is medium. So the corners are going to be rounded on all the, the flaps of the waterfall. So I'm going to place this here, remember just on this side, so we can leave this open so we can get our correct placement of our magnet that we're going to be using to close with our flap. So I'm going to attach this and I'll be right back. So the card is attached. Next thing is to get this closure um, affixed. So this measures one and three quarters inches wide by six and a half inches long scored at a half an inch down here. This may be a little bit long, but we can trim it off um, once we figure out where we're going to put it. So remember, this flap is oh, hasn't been affixed because we're going to secure our flap underneath it, so it kind of hides the, the edge right there. So let's see where we need it to be. So what we're going to be affixing here is a round circle. Now you have your choice. There's lots of these, these round circles in your cut-aparts. So the one I decided to use was this little house. So if you want to use the bunny, and when you find the little bunny, you'll know which one I'm talking about. He's so cute but I didn't want bunny with bunny, so I like this little house. So this is about, I want it to cover this little lip. This is the, if you can see, there's a little lip of the, the mailbox. I don't want that showing. I don't want it peeking out, so I might move this down just a tad. 
and put this here that looks about right. And then what I want to do, so I'm going to go ahead and affix this here. So that looks about right to me. So this is going to be, you measure yours because your bunny may be in a little different place than mine. But, but my tab is three and a half inches up. You measure yours. So if you're doing what I'm doing, you, you, you want to make sure it, it um, is right with your bunny here. So mine is three and a half inches. So I am going to affix this to the underside of this tab and then I'll be right back. So the tab is now attached to the back here so I can go ahead and pull the rest of my tapes, can I? And secure this down. Do I need anything else? I'm going to go ahead and pull all my tapes, secure that down. I'm also, I've cut a piece of this green, this green, this red from the, 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 the patterns and solids from Graphic 45 that Julie suggested for this um, collection. This is Graphic 45 Warm Wishes. It's, this is the back side, but this will work nicely. So I just cut this to fit here. I'm going to apply that and I'm sure I'm going to have to trim off the edge here but first I'm just going to apply this and then um, I'll trim off the the end part. I'm going to have to get a piece of white cardstock so I can see better. So that lines up and and I'll just affix it to about right here and then have to cut this end part. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You guys can cut your piece to fit. And then I am using my score tape, so it's going to take me a while. And I will be right back. Be sure you guys ink your edges. Ink your edges on everything. Always ink your edges. And I'll be right back. Okay, what a mess I have here. So I have I have my paper attached here. So let me get my scissors and cut that. Actually, it's it's almost following the line of the black cardstock I already cut. I was just kind of guessing it when I did that. So let's see if that works. So the, the picture I'm going to be using is this one. So I am going to have it about like that. I'm actually going to mount it. I've already inked my... Uh, hopefully I was in frame. <laughs> So there it is, it's cut, so that's about where I want. I want to put it around right here. This is the picture I want. I am going to mat it on 60, this is actually 80 pound cardstock. I just want to make this a little, um, give it more strength. So I'm going to go ahead and affix this to this flap. So I've added my black cardstock to this front piece and the way I measure it is I put it where I want it, make sure everything's hiding underneath it, I don't see any of this, and then I just get a pencil and I just, make sure it's all hidden, I just mark it. 
That way I know I'm going to be adding my tape, or you can add your glue here. And then we can just put this on right there. So that's what I'm going to do. I might use glue. I don't know. I'm just so afraid of glue. But um, I'll be right back once I get it on. You use whatever adhesive you want. So I have my little pitcher on there. So now we need to flip this open. We are going to be attaching a magnet here. And I would normally use a small magnet, um, but I'm out, so I'm going to be using my basic gray these. I have lots of these large magnets, but they, they will work. And it actually might be better because this be a nice secure <laughs> closure. So I'm going to put my plus side down here, peel this off, put that there. And I need to find where my minus is going to go. So let me take off my paper here, if I can take it off. Oh my gosh, it's so hard to take off. Take this off, okay. Hopefully it'll stick. So I'm going to lift my card up because I did not adhere it and then place the magnet down. Push it down. Hopefully it will transfer. And it did. So now we have our magnet. Our closure. So what I'm going to do Whoa, that is a strong magnet. Whoa. Thing. That is strong. That is strong. I wonder if it's... It's strong. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Oh, I have to cover this, this end bit. And I have to put... I decided I was going to use this side to cover my magnet. Um... I have to put a piece of paper here too, but that bunny is just too precious. So I think I will use him to cover my magnet. But first I'm going to cut a piece of that red um, paper and cover this strap and then I'll go ahead and cover this. So I'll be back. So there's the magnet. Sometimes what I'll do, if I can, is I'll cut a little hole with my three-quarter inch circle punch. Um, that way it kind of goes around the magnet and just gives this a little bit more elevation so it, it decreases the elevation of the magnet. Don't need to do it, it's just something sometimes I do. So I'm going to go ahead and affix this, and then I'm going to apply my inked little bunny. I'm going to apply him here. I'll probably have to glue him down because I need to get my edges really glued down well. So I will do him and get this done, and then I'll be back. Okay, so I got this little piece adhered. That looks pretty good. Our cute little bunny. And there's the magnet. So now what do we have left to do? We need to add our half inch strips here down our waterfall. We need to round the corners too. So I'm going to be rounding the corners of each of these pages and then finding a strip of paper half an inch to go down the waterfall 
so that and this is what I created so remember this was a, a chipboard element this happy holidays and these two were just little stamps from the 8x8 collection that I put ended up using the the red and gold pickles I think that turned out pretty nice so that's going to be going up here around there this will be like this so once I get my my colors here I think it'll be look pretty nice and then this page will be done if you're wondering why I have this is to protect my page one it was getting I got some tape on it oh here's that tape so I was scared I was going to ruin my my front side so that's why I put this underneath there so I'm going to go ahead and get some half inch strips and finish page two up and I'll be right back. Well, hello. So we're back and I made, I, I, I've changed things up. Um, so originally, remember I was going to have this up here. And that might still work. If you guys like that, I think it's beautiful. Adds a little sparkle. It doesn't look bad. And I don't know, I'm, I'm just waffling. But when I see that with this, with my strips all in place, to me this is all kind of matte type elegance. And then you have the glitter and they just didn't seem to go together so what I did and I'm thinking of doing so I cut this apart from the cut apart page let's see this is from the 12 by 12 from this cut apart page here I think it was somewhere right in here I cut this little guy out and then I cut this out from, here's the cut about part page with the circles. Oops, always out of frame with these circles. And I just cut this little element out from down here. So I cut this out. So I thought he would look good up there. And then just kind of put him with his resting in his little flowers right there something like that and then cut this out from the 8x8 eight eight cut aparts and thought he this would go good oops let me put this underneath like this something like that Everything is in the same tone. Um, the color scheme, everything is matted. It's that matte finish. And I just thought that looked better. And we have this little chipboard, chipboard element that we can kind of plop right down on that. Pop that out a little bit. And remember, we have this little chipboard element that we can plop down here. So these are the colors I chose. So this is from, <clears throat> obviously, the red um, patterns and solids that we got from Graphic 45 for this collection. This is from this paper this I used the 12 by 12 so I just cut a little strip a half an inch strip off of of this page from the 12 by 12 collection this is from the graphic 45 patterns and solids that Julie picked for us I put that in there 
and then this is the green one that we've used already. So I kind of lined them up. This is the order. I kind of like it like that. Red dot, green, gold dot. So I think that's what I'm going to do. And I'm pretty sure that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to um, cut everything. And I'm, I am sure almost all of you have applied these border strips to um, waterfalls before. So you just have your half inch strip. We've rounded the corners on these two sides, this side here. We're going to be placing it because we rounded our corners here, right here. Just have a little bit of black reveal and then you just glue it down or tape it down, however you decide. So I'm going to be probably using glue. I'll probably use glue um, to, to put that down. And I did ink all of my little cut aparts. I did a little black soot and then a little bit of the brown, this um, vintage photo around it. Same thing with this little piece. I inked around it and I inked around this little chipboard element with some black just to have it pop out a little bit more and inked around this little cut apart. So I'll be placing those also and I did a little bit of of inking with the brown, the vintage photo, around our little rabbit to hide that white border of the cardstock. So I'll be getting those down after I put in my little border strips. So I put down my deer here. He is one inch, I believe, in. So he's one inch in, and basically this ear is just at the edge of the designer paper. So he's in. I just put a dab of glue kind of in the middle so he's kind of open on the sides here because we're going to be sticking this under him. And this is going to be wrapping around him. So I something like this. So you can play around with it the way you like it. Um, maybe more like that. I think I might do that. So it's kind of cradling him. So let me just put a dab of glue. Is this the exact same thing? Oh my goodness, I didn't even notice. Huh. Is that the side I want? Yes, okay. Whoa, so I'm going to put a dab of glue here till I figure it out. So it's kind of cradling him there. And then this Happy Holidays is going to be right there. And I'm just doing a little dab of glue till I make sure everything's where I want it. And then I'll go in and re make sure the glue's all around it. I have him. Let me see how I got this. Does that look good? I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to go back and add some glue underneath here, and I think he is done. So I went ahead and added all my border strips, and I'll I'm way out of frame. 
And I'm going to add some strips here to cover up um, these little areas. And I'll probably do that at the very end, see what kind of paper we have left. I was thinking of just using gold all the way through so it's a consistent color and it's not too crazy. Um, but it'll be like that. Okay, so I just wanted to show you our little deer. He's all tucked in there. He looks so cute. I added our three-dimensional chipboard bunny. Probably can't tell he's 3D, but he is. The papers are all in. These little strips. I'll, af, after we're done with the whole album, depending on what scraps we have left, we're going to cover these little borders right through here. And then we come to this last page. So need to be able to cover this up. So what I got was this cut apart. Here's the lantern on this side. Cut it, ink the edges. This is going to fit right here. And then we have to cover this little part down here. So what I did is I just got the green, the green, the gold um, cardstock that Julie found for us. I cut it. It's a it's it's a half an inch also wide, and I just measured it and cut it from side to side, and rounded the bottom corners. So that is going to go in down here, and that will be clued in. So that is covering up this black part that was showing. And what you want to make sure, once that's you got that all in, you make sure it is not showing below. And it shouldn't if you get it lined up right. So if I get mine lined up right, when this closes, it will not be showing through here. So that's going to be the last thing I do. And the edges are all clear. So when you open this up, you have one more photo opportunity here. You can either just glue it down at the end and have a little tuck spot up here, or just glue it totally on down. And I wanted to share with you too, if you don't like doing all these fussy cuttings and it's just too much for you, you have so many other options. You have all these other little cut aparts. If you just want to use an image like this, and tuck it up there and maybe put happy holidays coming out from it or nothing just have a little image you can do that if you want to use this bigger image which is basically what I have only it's 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 just bigger you could do that you can tuck that up there and it would be um, hiding underneath your flaps here so just remember you have so many options and if you make a mistake with paper you can always correct those mistakes. So that's it for now for page two on to page three.